Brian Cage versus John Moxley. Taz is a promo first. He heard Moxley chirping some propaganda bullshit about how the machine's not 100%. While you were quarantining with your wifey, this guy was working a full schedule, training his ass off. Come on out here, Moxley. Full schedule? One one match a week? Yeah, Yeah, buddy would have laughed at that one. Uh, Come on out here and bring that AEW title. So Moxley comes out. I've missed this guy. (laughs) He's such an awesome champion. So the match starts, and John Moxley does just what he promised he was going to do. He attacks the bicep. Now, here's the thing. Cage has recovered from his surgery. He was cleared to compete. He has been winning matches since. This bicep is not 0%. So when Moxley grabs him with an arm bar, Cage just kind of sneers at him like he's been through worse. He picks him up. He curls him with the bicep and then throws him over his head. But... Moxley was right. He never said the arm was 0%. He said not 100%. And he stuck to his game plan. And he went through arm bars and kimuras and hammer locks and wrist locks, arm and shoulder targeting over and over again. And the more he worked it over, the more Cage started to be in pain. Are you telling me he softened it up? He softened it up. Wow. He has a, a, a long-term game plan. The, the What happened to the beginning of the match... Affected what happened in the middle of the match, which led to what happened at the end of the match. This is called telling a story. So, for the most part, while Cage's arm still hurts, he's a machine. He's destroying Moxley, throwing him on a guardrail that's leaning against the ring, suplexing him onto a chair. Now, I did love this match. There was one point near the end where Cage gets whipped into the corner, and he tries to do the shoulder to the post spot. And it's so horrible that I am yanked out of the match. <laughs> so I, I will admit, that was that was bad. But they kept on going, and everything after that was great. Moxley tried a paradigm shift, and as promised, Cage is swole. He couldn't get the move. But he's tried it again a few seconds later. He got it, but Cage is swole. Moxley couldn't get all of it, and Cage kicked at it too. So Moxley went back to plan A. Which we'll is tear this man's arm in half. He tear his biceps in half is what he said. He tried a Kimura, cross arm breaker, something like the LaBelle lock. They're rolling around on the mat, transitioning to different holes for like two minutes. Taz can see this. Taz is no dummy. Taz can see where this is going. Taz has an investment to protect. If Brian Cage's arm is torn in half, if he goes back on the shelf, Taz is not making money. Taz grabs his orange towel. He throws it into the ring. And the announcers make it very clear he has saved his man several months of rehab. So the match is over. Moxley has won. He's beaten the machine. He's still the AEW world champion. But Cage, of course, also has his belt, the FTW belt. He levels Moxley with a belt, goes in to attack him some more when the lights go out. Darby Allen makes his big return, dives on the top rope, levels Cage with a skateboard, and then... Apparently, they all did this about two minutes too early because we got two minutes of everyone just milling around and filling time for a while. But that was that. And then they're explaining Moxley's still champion. Darby's music is playing. There's issues to be settled between Moxley and Darby. Issues between Darby and Cage. Probably between Cage and Moxley, all of this. And as they're wrapping up the show and the lights are starting to dim, Jericho again screams, I'm covered in orange juice! And Jim Ross adds, You stink! <laughs> I got to say that I loved the match, loved the story, thought it was great. Last week I did question, why the fuck did they give Taz the FTW, or why did Taz give Brian Cage the FTW title before this match? And I stand by that 100%. And they can still do this, what I'm about to say, but you also could have introduced the title by doing this. And that is, Brian Cage never quit. He That's never true. gave up. That is true. And Taz ended up throwing in the towel. Taz is the one that ended the match, not Brian Cage. And there's a very easy promo to cut here about how this is why I am giving this man yeah. the FTW title. Dude, now that I'm thinking about it, that because would have made so much more he sense. he got stuck in this move, and his mindset was, fuck it. You can't, obviously can't say that on TV, but that was his mindset. Fuck it. Fuck the world. Fuck this arm. I'm not <laughs> quitting. 
I will lie here in this hold until you tear my arm off, and then I will kill you. I will drill claw you with my other arm. That's why I'm gifting him this title. The toughest yes. motherfucker I ever saw. Is that there's easiest not, promo? There's not just that, but Taz is the one who threw in the tile uh, towel. So there's a reason for Cage to be mad at Taz, and then therefore a reason for Taz to try to redeem himself in Cage's eyes by yes. gifting him with a belt. That would all make so much more sense than what all of this. Well, I mean, you could still do the promo. I mean, you could still have Taz just come out and say. You know, I gave this guy this belt. Some of you didn't know why. Now you know. This guy never gave up. He never yeah. quit. F the arm. F the bicep. F you. I'll never quit. That's why he's the FTW champion. It can be, it's, it's, it's an easy story. But anyway, thought the match was really good. Great story. I mean, this is what you want in a world title match. And yeah. Moxley's the champion. My only... It's not even a negative of the match, and it's not a negative of, of any of the actual performers that worked on the show. It's the performers in the crowd. And I don't even know if it was just miking or what, but this crowd was more dead than any Dynamite crowd that we've heard in months. I don't know why. I don't know if it was they were tired. Maybe it was really hot. Maybe they had the masks on and they weren't used to being so hot outside with the mask. I don't know what it was, but they were not as... Wild and crazy. It was not the usual AW vibe. And I thought it hurt certain things on this show. Like, especially the Darby return. Like, the Darby return... Like, obviously, you can't have a crowd. If you had a crowd, they would have gone batshit crazy for this guy. But even, like, you know, the the wrestlers in the crowd. It was like he showed up and... They, like, clapped. And he did his spot. And they cheered. But... It was missing something. And, you know, it's not their fault. It's not AEW's fault. What can you do? You've, you've, you're in the middle of a pandemic. But it was noticeable that the crowd was less excited for this show than for, for many, many shows. Like, any show I can remember since they started putting people in there. It was weird. But, there you go.